In everyday medicine, most anatomical structures are housed deep inside the body, covered by skin and fat and muscle. However, you'll still have to be able to estimate the location of these structures, even when they're not visible. The way we do this is by learning surface anatomy, which is essentially the study of the superficial features of the body and how they relate to the deeper ones. My name's Connor, and today we're going to cover the surface anatomy of the thorax, including where to listen when trying to hear the heart valves. Welcome to Anatomy 101. First, let's make sure we're all on the same page when talking about the major contents of the thorax. There are 12 thoracic vertebral bodies, each of which produces a rib numbered accordingly. Running most posterior and simply passing through on its way to the stomach is the esophagus. Anterior to this, we have the trachea, which splits to carry air to both lungs. Then we have the heart, which sits anterior to the trachea. And the two lungs, which envelop the heart on both sides. The lungs are surrounded by the thin pleural membranes. And all of these structures are enclosed by the anterior parts of the first 10 ribs, which form the rib cage. The costal cartilages of the ribs, colored blue here, articulate with the sternum, which itself is composed of three parts. From superior to inferior, these are the manubrium, the body, and the xiphoid process. The remaining notable bones are the clavicle, or collarbone, which goes from the manubrium to the acromion of the scapula. Then of course the scapula, which has this bony projection anteriorly, known as the coracoid process, and the humerus, which articulates with the scapula. Lastly, we have several muscles which are noticeable on the anterior side. These are the round deltoid, which forms the bulk of your shoulder, the chunky pectoralis major, rectus abdominis, and the external obliques, which both insert into a long tendinous structure known as the linear alba. Okay, that's a lot of anatomy. Let's go and break all that down and see how we can relate it to the surface anatomy. As we go along, I suggest you have a feel of these structures on yourself. It'll help you remember them all and prove why we call them surface anatomy. First, put your fingers right in the middle of your chest at the top of your rib cage. You're currently palpating the top of the manubrium of the sternum, known as the jugular notch. If you press gently, you might be able to feel the pulsation of your aortic arch and some of its branches. Next, move your fingers laterally along the horizontal bone that joins the manubrium. You're currently feeling the clavicle, which goes all the way laterally until it joins the scapula. Speaking of scapula, if you palpate just inferior to the clavicle at its lateral point, you may be able to feel the coracoid process, a bony projection of the scapula. Now let's go back to the jugular notch, but this time move your fingers downward and stop when you feel a slight bump. This is known as the sternal angle and is the joint between the manubrium and the body of the sternum. Remember this, as it will be a very important landmark throughout your studies. Okay, now move your fingers ever so slightly laterally to where you'll feel a bump that comes off the side of the sternum. This is the second costal cartilage of the second rib. You won't be able to feel the first rib as it's overlaid by the clavicle. Feel just below this costal cartilage and you're feeling the second intercostal space. You can continue this process downward and feel each intercostal space in turn between each rib. Finally, the border formed by your 10th ribs, their costal cartilages and the xiphoid process is known as the costal margin. This is easily palpable in most people. Okay, let's move on to those muscles. The easiest to feel in most people is the deltoid, which forms the bulk of your lateral shoulder. Next is pectoralis major, which forms a soft protrusion on your anterior chest from the sternum laterally. It stops inferiorly, approximately in line with the start of the xiphoid process. In women, the presence of the breasts may make it hard to palpate pectoralis major, but rest assured, it's present here in everybody. Next, if you put your fingers at the level of the xiphoid process and run them vertically downwards, you'll notice an indentation between your abdominal muscles. This is known as the linear alba and is the point of attachment for most abdominal muscles. Next, either side of the linear alba, you might be able to feel a number of small lumps arranged vertically. This is your rectus abdominis muscle, and you have one on each side. You may know these better as your abs or your six pack. Lastly, we had the external oblique muscle, which forms the outermost muscular wall of the abdomen and actually overlies the rectus abdominis. In addition to these, 
we also have two more important muscles that act on the thorax. To feel one of them, put your fingers just behind your right jawbone and look to your left. You'll notice a muscle pop out. Follow it down your neck to where it joins the manubrium of the sternum and the clavicle. This is your sternocleidomastoid muscle and you have one on either side of your neck. Alright, now we've covered most of the palpable structures, let's relate the surface anatomy to some deeper things. First, the lungs. The trachea should be easily palpable between the sternocleidomastoid muscles as it travels down into the thorax. You should be able to feel a series of bumps on its surface known as the tracheal cartilaginous rings. You stop being able to feel the trachea as it goes deep to the sternum at the jugular notch. With the ribcage shown lightly here, we can estimate where deep structures will sit. The apex, or top of the lungs, sits approximately 2-3cm to three centimeters above the clavicle on each side. The base, or bottom of the lungs, should sit approximately in the 6th or 7th intercostal space. The oblique fissure of the left lung approximately follows the 7th rib. And the oblique fissure of the right lung is mostly found in the 6th intercostal space as it travels downwards. The horizontal fissure of the right lung sits mostly in the 4th intercostal space. Lastly, the pleural membranes that cover the lungs start at the apices and go all the way down to the bottom of the thorax, stopping at the costal margin. Quickly looking at the lungs from the back, we can see the bases lie approximately at the level of the 10th rib, and the fissures start at the 4th rib before travelling downwards. We can also see that the pleura go all the way down to the 12th rib. The two arm bones associated with the posterior thorax are the scapula, which overlies the rib cage, and the humerus. OK, nearly done. The heart sits in the centre of the thorax and is overlied mostly by the sternum. It does, however, have a large protrusion into the left thorax, made up mostly of the left and right ventricles. There is a smaller bulge into the right side, composed mostly of the right atrium. The apex of the heart projects into the left fifth intercostal space. Drawing a horizontal line across the sternal angle is an easy way to find the superior mediastinum. This will be covered in more detail in a later tutorial. Let's finish by looking at the heart valves and where to auscultate on the chest if you want to listen to them. First we have the valve of the aorta, which is best heard in the second intercostal space, just adjacent to the sternum. Next, the pulmonary valve is best heard in the same horizontal plane as the aortic valve, but on the left side. Palpate three intercostal spaces downwards and you found the best place to listen to the tricuspid valve. Finally, follow the fifth intercostal space laterally until you reach a line running through the midpoint of the clavicle known as the midclavicular line. This is the ideal place to hear the mitral valve. From right to left, you can remember the order of the valves using the mnemonic A place to meet, where the first letter of each word corresponds to a valve. And there you go. That's all you need to know about the surface anatomy of the thorax. If you enjoyed this tutorial, subscribe to our channel and leave a comment down below with what you'd like to see us cover next. Have a great day. And you have one on each side.